Up to my current point in research and practice, this is my best attempt to explain the natural phenomena commonly referred to as no-contact combat and other higher-level supernatural abilities often demonstrated by people of great internal or spiritual discipline. Before I can explain the realities and truths behind these abilities, we first need to lay some basic foundations for understanding. Because we live in a very materialistic society today, where things are only believed that they can be seen with the naked eye or measured with mechanical instruments, supernatural phenomena are quickly dismissed as being bogus or fake. However, the truth cannot be changed by opinions based on ignorance, no matter how mainstream the opinion is. Let's clear away the shroud of ignorance today and reveal some truth to the world. Since far past ancient times, mystics have always referred to a natural and abundant energy that flows throughout our universe, sustaining and moving life in all things. It's been referred to by many different names, such as Chi, Prana, Ki, Viril, Ether, Orgone, Mana, and many others. This Chi is the electromagnetic energy which sustains the configuration and integrity of all forms and substances in the universe. Chi is the immaterial vital life force existing in all living things and is pervasive throughout everything in existence. This all-pervasive ether stream, which is a phenomena of our natural world, can be cultivated and controlled through man's willpower and physiology. It can be harnessed for positive or negative influences, for healing or for destruction. Chi is the power behind all miracles and all the processes of internal alchemy for reaching enlightenment. As Albert Pike once said, There is in nature one most potent force, by means whereof a single man who could possess himself of it, and should know how to direct it, could revolutionize and change the face of the world. Helena Blavatsky, the foundress of the Theosophical Society, described Vril energy as an ether stream that could be transformed into a physical force. Only the existence of a field of force can account for the motions of the bodies as observed, and its assumption dispenses with space curvature. All literature on this subject is futile and destined to oblivion. So are all attempts to explain the workings of the universe without recognizing the existence of the ether and the indispensable function it plays in the phenomena. Nikola Tesla knew the existence of this limitless power. It's not something that we have to invent. It's already here. We just have to find a way to harness it and apply it. In a seminal talk before the American Institute of Electrical Engineers in May 1891 at Columbia College in New York City, Tesla spoke these telling words. Of all the forms of nature's immeasurable, all-pervading energy, which ever and ever change and move, like a soul animates an innate universe, electricity and magnetism are perhaps the most fascinating. We know that electricity acts like an incompressible fluid, that there must be a constant quantity of it in nature, that it can neither be produced or destroyed, and that electricity and ether phenomena are identical. Now that we have defined the environmental energy, which we will refer to as Qi from this point on, we can look further into how this energy plays into our life as human beings and how it circulates and connects us to the earth and the universe. Every human being has their own electromagnetic field surrounding their physical body. This field is in the shape of a toroid. This can be referred to as the human torus field. In fact, toroidal energy fields exist around everything. People, trees, planets, galaxies, and even universes. The torus is the quintessential example of as above, so below. Everything as big as the universe, all the way down to atoms, are torus fields. Our body's torus field is a flow of positive and negative energy. The topology of a torus folds in upon itself, and all points along its surface converge together into a zero-dimensional point at the center. The torus can be seen as a folding flow of magnetic and dielectric energy, positive and negative converging upon itself in harmony and balance. This is where the symbol of the yin-yang originates from.
We as human beings have a complex energy circulatory system which provides us with life. Without the flow of qi, or the natural energies of magnetism and dielectricity, we would only be lifeless and limp bodies of flesh and bone. The sun is the actual source of dielectric energy, also referred to as yang qi. The earth is the source of magnetic energy, also referred to as yin qi. By connecting to the natural environment, we're supplied with both yin and yang qi, which circulate and give life to our physical bodies. With in-depth study of ancient religion from an esoteric point of view, one discovers that most religious teaching is about the natural sciences and how to harness the environmental energies to reach enlightenment and ascension. For example, using the ancient Vedic mythos, Krishna, another word for Christ, represents the dielectric black light. His consort, Radharani, represents the magnetic white light. And their offspring represents electricity. This holds the same for almost every spiritual trinity when analyzed. Electricity is always the offspring of the two partners, dielectricity and magnetism. It is the child of God. Electricity is dualistic, a hybrid of the two parent forces. Electricity is the ether in a modality of dynamic polarization. While magnetism and dielectricity are non-physical, etheric energies, electricity is a physical energy. It's actually an inferior force to magnetism and dielectricity, which are both transcendental superior forces. Let's take a look at what John Cheng, otherwise known as the Magus of Java, has to say on this. He uses acupuncture needles in the traditional points, but with a twist. Through them, he directs a form of electricity, as he calls it. But he doesn't draw the electricity from a wall socket. He claims to generate it within his own body. It was nothing like any acupuncture I'd ever had. I was getting really powerful electric shocks and couldn't control my movements at all. He says that what he does is no more supernatural than an electric eel, which also knows how to harness its yin and yang energies. Yin yang, positive and negative, you know. Mm -hmm. and my positive from here and my negative from here. Mm -hmm. And we meet together, this can get uh, like electricity. And is this because you're special? You have a special sort of uh, no, it's body? meditation every day. It's meditation? It's meditation every day. Like a yoga. Uh -huh. But I study about 18 years. 18 years? 18 years from, years. from my children, from my child people. Can you project this energy through your hands only or through other things as well? Only my hands. Only my hands. Like you can touch me? Like this? Mm -hmm. It's nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. It's my burn. Uh, it's like this. <laughs> Our sound recordist, Simi, was okay. skeptical yeah. at first. <laughs> Later, he told us that anybody could learn this. God had given us all the yin yang polarity, but it takes discipline and meditation to awaken and control it. And you must be very aware of your emotions. This energy can be dangerous. It can kill as well as heal. Then he asked for our newspaper. Whatever he had done to our newspaper, it's how he had healed my eyes that made me wonder. I had the opportunity to learn a little from John Chang's American disciple, Jim McMillan, before he died of cancer. He taught me the level one technique that he learned from John Chang and his lineage of Mopai. Here's a video clip of Jim performing his level three Mopai test 
with John Chang present at his side. Too fast. Very slow and full of concentration and force it up. What the? It's like, he said, that just means like, you know when you when you go to the bathroom and you have to do the things a little bit, you have to push it really out. Yeah. That's how you have to push it. Yeah. So with all with all your strength and yeah. concentration. <laughs> Good. It's good. Yeah. Nice, nice better. But I went fast. Yeah. Yeah, I went too fast. I didn't go slow. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's good. Is it the movie first? Yeah. Is it is it recorded? Stop. It's supposed to be yeah. Jun Cheng teaches a method of storing qi in the Dantian, the main battery in her energy body, which is located a few inches below the navel and inside the abdomen. He then infuses the yin and the yang energies to create the power that he does. This takes many years of daily disciplined meditation training to achieve. This fusion could explain the electrical and heat abilities that he's gained. The yang energy is dielectricity, the yin energy is magnetism. The fusion of the two creates electricity. Now we can look more into the phenomena commonly referred to as no contact combat. I will take Lama Dondrup Dorji as our example. He uses a technique called void power, the ability to disrupt the electromagnetic field of an attacker's energy pattern so that the assault can be neutralized and redirected without physical contact. In appearance it looks as if the attacker is being repelled away by a magnetic repulsion. Let's first watch a short demonstration of his no-contact combat, and then listen to him explain what's going on. While the demonstrations of Sifu Young over the last 20 years have always been a manifestation of continuous evolution in both quality and depth, Nothing could have prepared the audience for what they were to witness at the 1996 International Chinese Internal Arts Festival. In a program entitled The Power of Mindfulness, Sifu Yun gave his most profound and awe-inspiring display to date, a manifestation of phenomenon which few people could have believed until that afternoon, a glimpse of the true nature and higher potential of qi power.
called the engine buckle. Huh? When your engine are rooted properly, the fossil iron will reach the ground and displace the negative energy from underground. The ground is negative ions. This is positive ions. Just like air have iron, right? Everything have ions. Positive ion, negative ion, human blending of the fusion of the two. When your energy from lower down again, everything connect down to the wood, the ground, just like you're staying posture, it will reach the ground to the point that it will displace energy outside and coming up to you like a bubble. And then there are ways to create that electromagnetic energy around it. When my whole thing comes, I just watch. You know electromagnetic, it's like a magnetic cord gate, a chain thing. Huh? Huh? It's blood that large chi is chi that moves blood. So by you start working on the muscle, which is very tangible, <coughs> it will cause the blood to what? To move with the coiling and coiling. Right? In, in a way, it's also moving the chi. And later on, it's a mind that guides the whole thing. So the beginning is outside, later more and more inside. Okay? So first of all to do that, you need to have a proper body, a proper vessel. The proper vessel must be in harmony with heaven and earth. Whereby each bone connects to each bone in a proper way. Alright? And then each organ in the place also with proper dynamic. Whereby the emotion also need to be stable, the mind need to be stable, your body mechanic need to be stable, and the mechanic in relation all things need to be harmony. So that seems a lot, right? That's why you know, all, all my students, you know, even though they first came, you know, they, they might be of, of uh, not Buddhist. After a while, they all become more like Buddhists. And they start doing prayer practice to stabilize the mind. They start doing meditation to stabilize the mind. They start doing different things because all that make different. And then the practice, even the ritual running in the in a bijum, which is what we practice, it's not about appearance. It's about what as a means to develop your mindfulness or how to respect it. In a way, it's through the outer method you understand the inner structure. For the outer guru, we get to know the inner guru. And for the inner guru. Get to, to connect with what we refer as the silver guru, which is your, you know, the Buddha nature, your original nature. We call it Buddha nature because the nature is the same for everyone. Whether you are a Christian or Buddha, just like if you die, you go through the same state of battle, whether you are a, a religious person or not. The difference is if you have been trained for it, then it might be very stable. And you can really direct your conscience in any way you wish to go. One thing, Refi, put it down second, because it's clean. It's a clean energy. Buddha wished nothing but the best for everyone. Did not want you to worship him. Did not want you to do anything else except to bring benefit to yourself. Did not promise you happen. Did not promise nothing. Just say, like, if you do this, this is happen. If you do this, it happen. Okay. Whatever you want, I love you the same. If you have the belief system, better have something that will encourage you to do better all the time. Not become clear, up, become divisional, so on and so forth. Just like uh, my teacher, he encouraged us not to involve in politics and involve in anything, but involve just be compassionate for benefit all shape. So that's why many students of mine, even they start doing Tai Chi, they all have all the groups. So you don't have to put a flag, I'm a Christian, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Muslim. Just be a good person. But how to be a good person? You need a way, a structure to help you understand. So for me, the, the, the best way is to put the Buddhist down. In Masawa, I know many people who are very good Masawa. Not one has been my role model for humility. Not one. Bruce Lee, not for humility. No one. No one of people I know that, oh, I'm only second to serve. No, they all think they're the best. And create a lot of unnecessary content. You know, when they're good, you know, when they do, a lot, a lot of unnecessary A lot of unnecessary content. And the one that my role model is my own way to hand on the True compassion. So, you need a good role model. If you hang out with the wrong kind of role model, you're really going to drag you down that direction. You follow me? So, the benefit of that is we're having a belief system that can help you to improve yourself. Because the belief system is what? A means to help you understanding how things work. Then the best to find a way just help you to you, not one that helps. That's it. The 
disadvantageous. There is a clear transcendental science behind these supernatural abilities. They are a reality and they are based on truths of God and nature. These sciences have been preserved since ancient times, but have been nearly wiped out and forgotten today. It's not in the best interest of the powers that be for mankind to know its divine essence and reach its higher potential. Organized religion and government have suppressed these teachings over thousands of years, the same way they suppressed the work of Nikola Tesla and his discoveries of free energy. It's easy for the ignorant to scoff and ridicule the things they don't understand. However, these are not parlor tricks. It's time to reevaluate these abilities and to try to understand their workings. The transcendental science of life is re-emerging. It's the way for us to break free from our dependencies and to transcend on every level, and to empower ourselves as people, as societies, as nations, as a world, and to reconnect with God and the natural world we live in. You know, there's there's no actual factual basis for these buffoon um, teachings and ideologies and concepts and, and, and theories. They're all theories. Relativity's a theory, gravity's a theory, the globe's a theory, evolution's a theory, the Hegelian dialectic is a theory, the Big Bang is a theory. Let us dispense with these stupid, idiotic, moronic, devil-worshipping, demonic theories and let us be imbued in transcendental truth. It's right here. I've been sharing it. So look at all these books. Look, it's all here. These are Neoplatonists. These are our these are our God teachers. We can't fail. We've got the truth. There's no globe, there's no relativity, there's no gravity. And I rest my case with Tesla. Tesla said Einstein was a monkey man, which he was, and he he, he thought his relativity was something to flush down the toilet. So pathetic. And he did not think anything of gravity. He thought that was a ridiculous, nonsensical, idiotic stupidity. And he explained that everything is grace of magnetism and electricity. The Coriolis effect, the tides, tornadoes, every effect you see is an effect of magnetic wisdom. Magnetism is God. It is a conscious being, omniscient, omnipresent. There's nowhere in the universe where there's not magnetism. It's all magnetic. There's no gravity. It's hocus pocus. And we've got to slay these demons, guys. Let's get on. Let's get on with it. Brace yourself with the helmet of salvation, the, the uh, breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with, with you know, diligence. We've got to put our, uh, our armor on, as it says in Ephesians. Dress yourself with the... the um, the armor of, of God to defend the truth because we have a war and it's a spiritual war with the demons in the invisible air of our plane. It's a war. No time for resting. <laughs>